to CPA Site Solutions presentation on how to create a successful pay-per-click campaign. My name is Fanny Barrientos and I will be your presenter today. We're going to go ahead and get started, but before we begin on into the presentation, um, I have a few housekeeping items. One, um, this presentation is being recorded, so you will be receiving the recording and the slides within the next business day. So if you missed something, didn't quite catch something that I said, you will have that available to you for you to review. Um, also, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, um, please enter them in your GoToWebinar panel marked questions, and I will get to them at the end of the presentation. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so this webinar is an introduction to pay-per-click advertising. Basically, it's something that you can do to pay-per-click is a channel that you can leverage um, to really put yourself out there and, and grab new clients, especially at this time of year when it's about to get really busy as soon as people start getting their W-2s. So um, we just wanted to put this out there and show you guys how you can leverage PPC as a channel to help you grab more clients. So just a quick intro to PPC. Um, Pay-per-click itself as a marketing channel, it's an advertising model used to direct web traffic to websites from search engines in which an advertiser, that would be you, pays a publisher, the search engine, each time the ad is clicked on. Now there are models out there that charge you every time an ad is shown, but this one is based on clicks. The benefits to it is that you can be a solution and not an interruption. So instead of marketing to a large random group of people with traditional marketing, PPC allows you to get in front of people at the exact moment that they search for the services that you offer. So they're paying attention to you because they're actively searching for the services. Um, you can control your budget. So the name pay-per-click comes from the pricing model in which your ad appears for targeted groups in the appropriate context, but you don't pay unless someone actually clicks on it. And that's because then you know that someone has, is interested in what you have to offer. And you can target and track it with uh, enhanced analytics and reporting. It's easy to get the exact type of clients that you want based on the demographic data like location and income. Um, and the dashboard is already there for you. So tracking via analytics and uh, phone numbers also helps you understand the ROI of your investment. So that's what the ad looks like. Um, you can see that they're usually shown up here at the very top of the search engine results and they'll usually be labeled with this small square that says ad. Okay, so before you start anything, you will need to do a little bit of preparation. Uh, first, you're gonna want to discuss and analyze your firm's goals. So understand who your target audience is. Are they individuals that need income, like keep you busy during tax season? Are they business owners? Are they, you know, just whatever type of client you're looking for or, or person you're looking for, you'll want to um, keep that in mind. And also, it may be that you are looking for specific people within a, a location or radius of your firm or maybe even by income level. Um, you can identify, you should identify goals and messaging. So think about the main services that you want to target and be found for. So for example, um, you know, small business, small business services, that would be one that would be probably most profitable. So that's something that you would then do research on to target. <clears throat> and then you're also going to want to define what success looks like. So um, you'll it really will depend on you and your business and what your goals are. But you know, some examples are, you know, have so many new clients, have so many people um, ask, uh, um, request information through a form, um, have so many phone calls in a month. That, that is something that you should define and have a rough idea as you're going into this uh, preparation phase. Um, okay, some common pitfalls to avoid. So because pay-per-click is, you know, based on kind of a monthly or daily and monthly budget, you can think of it, this as like working backwards. So if you have, um, a monthly budget set aside. So let's say it's, you know, $30. Um, then that means that on a daily basis, you'll have $1 to spend. Now, if you're targeting a specific keyword in a location, so like, let's say, for example, here, you're targeting, here we go, Los Angeles, um, one click will cost you, say, 90 cents. So you've already spent the majority of your daily budget. So that means that you can't afford to also have clicks in like San Diego, which would cost $1 or 
here Riverside, which would cost 80 cents. You need to have enough daily budget to cover all three areas or enough daily budget to just cover multiple clicks in one area. So that's a common pitfall to avoid is uh, marketing too many services. So marketing too many services as in, um, you know, if you're doing taxes and then you're also doing extensions or a, a bunch of different services that are going to require different types of searches, then um, then it's going to be a lot harder for you to manage your budget and it's going to require more budget. So the recommendation here is to focus on two to four services at the time of launching your campaign. Um, and then out of control spending is something that can really happen very easily. So you'll want to set an appropriate daily and monthly budget so that you can actually set a limit to your daily and monthly budgets for, on your campaign so that you will not spend more than what you should be spending. And then the last thing is you're um, not having proper landing pages. So landing pages are the web pages that people are directed to after they've clicked on your ad. So um, the one thing that I, we see a lot of accountants do, and it's really not ideal, is just to link to pages on your home, on your website or then your homepage. And the reason why that's not ideal is because that content is not made specifically for your pay-per-click campaigns. So you really should put the time and effort to create a web page that's specific for pay-per-click. Um, it can be based on pages that are on your website, but it should really should be customized for people that are looking for a specific service. Um, OK, so what does that landing page look like? Well, that landing page should focus on the ads topic and provide a strong call to action on what the visitor should do next. In this, you know, in most cases, it's going to be to contact your firm. All right, so once you've got that set up, you'll want to think about implementation and optimization. So in order to um, create, implement a campaign, and these are just the mechanics behind it, um, you'll want to create messaging that supports your brand, marketing goals, and appeals to potential clients. And so what that does is, um, that's not listed here, but in order to get there, you'll need to understand what keywords are being searched and have a list of those keywords and then um, really just use them and then weigh them out based on some planning software that you can use to see how much competition it may have, how expensive that keyword may be, um, just to get an understanding of how much budget you may need. So before any, before you even set up a PPC ad, the first thing that you should be doing is looking at uh, keyword targets and the keywords that you believe are going to be driving the type or are going to be used by your ideal client. Um, then once you are ready to set up a PPC ad, um, you'll want to create an ad campaign within AdWords. So we are Google ads, I should say. Um, with the reason why we use Google ads is because it's the most popular platform, but there are other platforms out there for you. Bing is the next one. I'm not sure if Yahoo has one, but I believe Yahoo is connected to Bing. But um, Yes, the reason why we use Google is because, you know, it has the greatest market share in search. So you're going to have you're going to reach the greatest amount of people. Um, so from there, once you create a, a campaign, then you're going to want to segment the keywords under that specific campaign by creating ad groups. So it's just you're if you think of like a broad keyword, that's like taxes, then you would kind of uh, drill it down to more like specific types of um, tax filing. So whether it's individual or business or whatever it is, and those would be separated with an ad group. Um, so ad groups are that collection or that breakdown with under like a broad term that will trigger a specific ad that speaks specifically to those keywords. OK, so once you have the ad group, then you're going to have to create the actual copy and the actual ad. So what you saw displayed in a couple of slides ago where it has the perp or the, I'm sorry, the blue text and then underneath it had green text, it said ad. And then um, underneath that it had gray text. Then that is that's your actual ad. So that's what people are going to be shown. So you'll want to create that copy and include your targeted keywords. Um, then finally, once you have an, your ad, then you're, wanna, you're going to create a landing page or a web page. And like I said, this could be a page that's based on a page that's an, uh, on your site already. But you'll want to add certain things that speak specifically to uh, maybe the content that you have on your ads or if you want to repeat some language just to kind of tie it together for the user. 
then you'll also want to include um, a phone number or a form so that people don't have to leave the web page in order to uh, co contact you. Um, oh, and then create a list of keywords you want to target. So that would be the first step. So the way that it works is, if you can think of it from a user perspective, is someone searches Google for accountant that helps with payroll. So let's say they entered that. Um, the word payroll would then trigger your ad. Um, what, if you created an ad group for payroll accountant, then that keyword would trigger your ad, and then the searcher would see your ad. Then the searcher clicks on your ad, goes onto the landing page about payroll accounting, and then ideally converts by completing the form on the landing page. And then that's the entire journey from when they were searching down to contacting you. Okay, so let's let's dive into keywords a little bit. So there are two types of keywords with PPC. There are just keywords, positive and negative keywords. So keywords in just uh, positive keywords are the words that you do want to show up for. So you'll want to choose uh, keywords based on your desired what your desired client might search, as I mentioned before. Um, so I'll give you the small business owner example. Um, they're typically a more profitable client, so you'll want to target things like tax filing for small businesses um, and show your ads for that keyword. Um, there are also four different types of keywords. So they're um, what we call match, broad match, modified, phrase match, and exact match. So depending on how people search, because not everybody will search or use the same language while they're searching, having one keyword with these different types will allow you to capture as much variation of that search as possible so that you know um, what you know people are searching and then also uh, give, give your campaign an opportunity to appear for as much people or as many people as possible. Um, I'm not going to go into the specifics to each of these, but you can look over here. They're basically um, from a loose matching sort of phrase down to exactly matching the phrase at a search. So it's just kind of a spectrum of how closely your chosen keyword matches to the actual search that a user used to find you. Um, on the flip side, you'll uh there are negative keywords as well and these are words and search phrases that you don't want to show up for and this is negative keywords are very important in order to, for you to spend your budget effectively because if you're showing up for keywords that you don't want to show up for and people click on it it's a wasted click and it's a wasted spend for you so adding keywords that are technically related to what you do but you know will not bring you any sort of profit. So like say for example, jobs or salary, salary free, uh, cheap, DIY, anything like that, you can tell that the person is not necessarily looking to hire an accountant, they're looking for something else related to accounting. So adding keywords like this will allow you to not show up for these and waste spend. Another way for you to manage um, your uh, your budget is to create an ad schedule, which allows you to display your ads or change bids at certain times. So you're basically telling your campaign when you think people are the right type of people are searching for your services and displaying it only at that time. Some people uh, decide to write 24 seven, you know, especially if you're just starting your campaign, this is something that you'll kind of have to watch for at first and then look at the metrics and understand you know, when people are clicking on and, and all of that, because um, if you can eliminate times when, you know, you don't have as many searches, then you don't run the risk of showing an ad for somebody that may not be interested, because then you'll, you'll learn when people that are profitable for you are actually searching. So for example, if your firm is targeting a business owner through like business tax returns ad group, you can schedule your campaign to only run during business hours when they're, when people are actually at their desks and most likely to be searching. Okay, so of course we need to understand how your investment is helping. So um, that's when we dive into performance and reporting. So when someone takes an action on your landing page, whether it's filling out a form or calling a phone number, 
you have to add code and implement modifications to the pages so that the software recognizes when that action has been taken. Um, and what that does is that it, when you add software, like a, a snippet of code, then it triggers uh, what we call a lead. And a lead we know is someone that it has reached out to you. So that is proven to be a successful contact in terms of PPC. So um, you need to be able to see that so that you can understand the return on investment because then you'll know, okay, this person signed up for or turned into a lead for, we'll go back to business, a small business, then you have an idea of how much revenue you'll typically get and you, you'll have an estimate to compare to the spend that you are spending on your campaigns. So let's say a lead comes through for small business tax filing and you know that you generally make, I don't know, first session like in an hour, $100, you know, and then um, the click only costs you $3. So you've already positive there. Um, okay, so the way that it is captured is um, via a thank you page. So the thank you page is a page that users are redirected to after they filled out a form. And that page should contain a snippet of code that triggers a lead conversion in the dashboard. And that will be recorded in the dashboard, but someone has to hit this page in order for that uh, conversion to be recorded. The other way that you could do it is by using call tracking numbers on your PPC ads. Um, this mostly requires third party software, but um, is compatible with most websites um, and can provide you with a lot of insight because it'll basically tell you when someone has called you, right? Because not everyone is going to fill out a form online. Some people prefer to call. So you want to capture those, what we call offline conversions as well. So here's how call tracking works, right? Um, you have a unique number that is created and then forwarded to your own office phone number. Um, when someone clicks on your ad and the tracking number displays on your website, then they can call that number. Um, once they call that number, uh, the tracking number will trigger that conversion in that call. And then you can see from how many uh, calls come through how you know how successful your ad was because if a specific ad is is creating more calls for you then you know that that ad is successful for you and you'll want to keep that ad um, if you see that there are calls that are not coming in through an ad you may want to reconsider um, changing the ad to make it more interesting or whatever it is and that really just kind of leads to optimization that's what we call optimization and it's a way for you to understand and receive feedback on which copy and content is actually resonating with searchers um, and then once the call is completed, you can receive an email with the caller ID, number, date, and time so that you can follow up on that call and then close and become a client. So with PPC, I've already kind of mentioned, it's really critical to monitor, monitor and optimize your campaign performance to ensure the highest ROI. So you'll wanna keep track of how much you're spending, how many clicks you're getting, how often you're showing, um, how many or how much each click is costing you for a specific keyword. Some keywords will maybe really expensive, other ones may be more affordable. Um, you'll also want to um, you also want to track how many leads are coming in through specific keywords so that you know up until the person contacts you which keywords are more profitable and successful for you. Um, and keywords are something that have to be added on a consistent basis. You can't just have a set of keywords added and then just let it run. Both positive and negative keywords have to be monitored and added and subtracted because people are gonna be searching a bunch of different ways. People are gonna be searching for new things or using new language. So you'll have to know, you'll have to understand what those searches are. And if there's a search that ha uses a keyword that you aren't already using and want to target, then you'll, you can just add it. Or on the flip side, if someone is using a keyword that you don't like, that you hadn't thought of before, you'll want to add it to your negative keywords list. Um, and then I've already kind of alluded, you'll want to test ad copy as needed. If an ad appears to be underperforming, meaning it's getting a lot of impressions, so it's getting shown a lot, but it's not getting a lot of clicks, there may be something wrong with the ad. There may be something happening that for some reason, the ad is just not resonating with searchers. So you'll want to 
modify the language a little bit. It is a little bit of a guess, um, and, but you'll want to modify the copy a little bit so that to see if, you know, once you compare it to the ad that you're testing against, if that modification then uh, helps, you know, attract more clicks, then you know that that was a positive change. Um, so of course you're going to want to have reporting on your results. So your report should provide an overall summary. So um, on say for example, how many times your ads have been shown and that metric we refer to as impressions, how many times there have been clicks, um, the cost per click. So they're usually going to be uh, anywhere. I mean, I don't know, uh, PPC, I don't think I've any seen anything under like $2 per click um, up to whatever. It, it can get pretty high. Um, and then it should also pro provide more granular detail. It should show you how many times the ads have been shown and clicked. So, and how much each category costs and number of conversions. And what, how, how it'll be shown is that it'll tell you how much each click is costing, but then it'll also give you a summation of how much all of the clicks within a certain campaign are costing you. So you'll have an aggregate number to know how much you're spending in total. And you'll want to compare that to the number of conversions. And from there, you can get an understanding if you just divide the cost by the number of conversions, how much you're spending per person that converts. And that's a metric that you'll want to keep track of um, so that you can understand and compare that figure to um, how much revenue you're getting from those conversions. Um, and just so that you know, we actually provide quarterly consultation and review reports and make adjustments if you actually sign on with us. So this is something that you don't have to understand yourself. You can just, you know, go over it with us if you decide to move forward with um, PPC. So all in all, PPC is the fastest way to get your firm listed in search results. And really the benefit does come with having a long-term PPC plan. So the benefit of PPC is that uh, ultimately you can target any location you want. So if you are, if you have a virtual office and you're not really constrained by where you are, if you're doing SEO only, because of the way that Google understands accountants, it's only going to show you to local local searchers if you're only doing SEO. But with PPC, you don't have that limitation. So you can target people across the country if you wanted to. It doesn't matter what state you're in. Um, and then also, it's the quickest way to show up in search results. Um, SEO has its benefits too, but one of the drawbacks is that it takes time for it to show if you're doing any optimization. So this is a way to, you know, right now, especially if you're kind of under the gun to really get your marketing out there and like really get be ready for when people, when the influx of people start coming in in March and April, then you'll want to be ready and um, be ready with some sense of what is working and what isn't so that you can attract as many people come super busy season and and attract them effectively with you know without um wasting a lot of money on that all right so uh naturally do i you know we're going to talk about how you can partner or we can partner with UCP site solutions. We actually do all of this stuff for you. So we'll take care of the ad campaign setup. Our experts know at this point, um, some of them have been doing this for 10 years, so they know exactly what keywords you need to target. Um, they'll know how to set everything up from the campaign down to the ad so that you are starting off on the right foot. Um, or if you already have a campaign and you haven't been able to make it work, they'll be able to uh, take that over and really just uh, make uh, improvements to turn your campaign around. Um, naturally with that, it comes um, continual optimization because it is something you have to continually improve and reporting so you know exactly what's going on and ultimately understanding what your investment is doing for you. All right, so I'm gonna put the, our phone number up here if you guys are interested in signing up for this. Um, you know, and we don't only take care of pay-per-click, we also do social media search engine optimization and website design. But if you if this is if you're here because you're somewhat you're, there's a sense of urgency to get your marketing out there, I would definitely ask about pay per click because that'll be the the quickest way and potentially the most effective way to get your marketing started. Okay, so let's see, we have a couple of questions. Um, okay, so the first question is: Should each ad in your ad group target the same keywords? Yes, it should. 
it should all be related to the same keyword. So, um, and all talking about the same thing. Um, the difference is that you're going to want to say, like, sometimes, you know, people, uh, sometimes you can say one thing one way and uh, people won't really understand what you're talking about and you kind of rephrase it a little bit and then it clicks. So that's ultimately what you're doing when you ha are creating a uh, test ads and you're testing them against each other. You're just rephrasing what you're saying and rephrasing what you're offering to see which one resonates the most. Um, as part of our program, see the next question is from John. He asks, as part of your program, do you create the landing page? Yes, we do. We create specific landing pages for your um, campaigns. And let's see, there's a follow-up question. Is there a way for you to review the keyword search volume for my area before we get started to see if there's enough to justify a program? Actually, yes, if you contact um, an internet marketing advisor, they can give you an idea of how much it's going to cost um, using AdWords Keyword Planner. Um, so they can enter in your search or your area and what it is that you're trying to um, target and then they can give you a rough idea of how much it's going to cost ultimately to really find out it's going to come down to you actually starting a campaign because that's what it takes but if you want to get an idea then contact an internet marketing advisor and they can walk you through that um okay it looks like there are no more questions i'm going to hang on here for a couple more minutes just in case there are any latent questions but otherwise thank you guys so much for joining again like i said you will receive this recording and slide uh presentation within the next business day or so so if you want to review something or want to look over the deck again you'll have that available to you otherwise have a great day thank you